Good afternoon, everybody. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? <clears throat> Got some people on board that I need to talk with. This is the place that I was talking about. Good afternoon. I hope everybody have a good evening. I know everybody watching the live. Everybody else is on live. Hey, Hamlet. Good afternoon, Hamlet. How are you feeling? And I'm liking your bike. I love that motorcycle bag. I gotta get me some H2O. I've been dehydrated. So... As you know, hey, live for live for team. What's going on? How's everybody this evening? I hope you all having good. It's no telling who I didn't put the name on there, so it's no telling who may be coming on on my life. Oink oink Hamlet. So it's no telling who's gonna come on my live tonight. I'm very excited who's gonna come on and who's not. It's okay. But um hey love. I had a oh, let me tell you about what happened yesterday. As you all know, I met with Kenyon Glover and um <laughs> and in the processing of making, I was also networking, which I wasn't even expect to do, but because I wanted to support my friend, and it was like, oh, what are you doing? One girl recognized me, and then my friend, I wasn't even sure my friend was, uh, he didn't even know he was going to be there, but well, actually, he didn't know I was going to be there, but I've been knowing him for like, ooh, close to... 20 30 some years because he's my cousin's friend so but anyway getting back um i wasn't know he was going to be there but it was it turned out to be an awesome day yesterday um so i mean i really enjoyed myself and i hate that i couldn't stay there long because i really want to stay there a bit longer so him and I can actually have our coffee date, which I still owe him, but it's okay because we talked and everything. And I got my um, autograph book signed by him, even though it is his written a book, but still it was like an autograph signing and everything. But I still wanted to go on that date, you know, just to kick it with him. Hey, Alma, how you doing, Miss Simon? As you know, I am wearing David Ford. <laughs> but, make a long story short, I wasn't to be expected to um, talk about my um, podcast. I wasn't expected to be in networking because it was all about him and not about me. And I guess everybody say, you know, you never know. Hi, Iceberg. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. And, um, let me see who this is. And so, 
um, like I said, I wasn't it expected to be like that, but it did, and I am really enjoying myself. Hi, how are you? Hello. Where are you from? I'm from Algeria. Oh, so you know um, Moonlight Africa? Yeah, yeah. I'm a Sierra Leonean, but I'm from I'm in Algeria right now. That's good. What are you doing? How's your day been? Well, thank God for life. You know, I've been hustling, basic, even though it's hard, but we try. Um, well, that's good. That is awesome. Let me ask you this. How's you all, are you all getting any good water out there in Nigeria? Well, like, we don't have a permanent job. We just, for the day when you go, you have a job. To get two thousand, three thousand, that's real work. We don't have a permanent job. Okay, that's good. And y'all water is good, and everything else is good out there. Yeah, we got place to stay. Like when you work, you can get food, clothes. You can take care of yourself. That's good. How's the weather? Is it um, hot or is it cold out there? Well, for now, the weather is hot. But like, mo like next month, we'll be in observing cold. Very, yeah, this place is very cold. Because that's when y'all winter comes, right? What? That's when winter comes for you all? Because I know our winter is like, our winter is hot for you all and cold for us. Yeah, for and now, then y'all winter is like hot. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, when the the cold time comes, it's very cold. It takes a week. We don't take bath like regularly because the place is too cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, the yeah. weather is cold. You know, like in Sierra Leone, we only have the dry season mm -hmm. and the raining season. That's what we observe. But here the place is too cold. But we are coping, you know, we just have to cope. Yes, I I would love to come make it, you know, to visit out there one of these years because I know <laughs> it costs a lot to get out there to the, um, Nigeria because I no, did Algeria, some Algeria, not Nigeria, Algeria. Algeria, yeah. it's right next door to Nigeria. Nigeria, so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Algeria, yeah. Tunisia, then, Mali, Nigeria, you know, they're all just like something like Sarko, Sierra Leone, Guinea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I come from Sierra Leone, travel to Guinea, mm -hmm. from Guinea, go to Mali, Mali, I come to Algeria. Okay. Yeah, because I use okay. the. Well, <laughs> I use the normal road. Alrighty. <laughs> yes, and I'm glad that you dropped by and stopped by in on my life. And I hope you, um, you know, hope you'll be able to watch my podcast as it's going. So <laughs> I wanted to say salute to Algeria, salute to Nigeria. Yeah. You know, you all like brothers and sisters to me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We wanted yeah. to salute you guys. Yeah. You're welcome. All righty then. Well, yes, and then you have a great day, sir. Yeah, yeah, you too. And what's your name and where do you stay? Um, I don't give all that information out, but oh. I am in America. Okay, okay. Okay, nice. All righty then. Okay. okay. So how was your day today? It's good, it's good. Okay. But alrighty then, well it was nice speaking with you and I'll see you in a bit, okay? Okay. I got somebody else that wanna come in. Alrighty then, love. Well, I'm online. You have Yeah. Just press the S button. Okay, no problem. But I like can... I can DM you good night. Work. Um just we'll talk about it later. Uh just DM me. Okay, no problem. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right.
right. Hey, sister. Hey, Trini Meesley. How you guys are doing this evening? But yes, I had so much fun yesterday. And um, I was there to support my friend. And unfortunately, when I tried to support him, well, I wasn't trying. I was supporting him. And um, next thing I know, people were coming up to me and asking me about my podcast. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, they asked me first, they asked me, what did I do? And I told them, you know, of course, I'm a podcaster, a bright coming singer from Chicago and poetry writer. You know, of course, I gave them my bio, a little bit of it. So to make a long story short, <laughs> and my friend asked me, he said, I see you do a lot of podcasting. And I say, yeah, networking is always something, you know. But it's all good because I have fun with them and everything. So that was how yesterday go. Besides the fact that, you know, I wasn't able to see my dad for, um, see my dad's grave for, um, what I wanted to say, um, for fathers that wasn't able to see his grave. But, it's okay because I'm going to see it next weekend or weekend before before this year is out, before the summer hit. You know what I mean? Before the winter hits, I will be able to see my dad's grave for the very first time because I ain't seen it almost. Actually, I never seen him until the time they buried him, and I was too little to even remember how it looked then. But, hey, special beauty. Hey, treat it sweet. Um, it was crazy though, you know. It was really, it was like one of those crazy days because um, the weather was kind of awkward yesterday. It was warm and then it rained, like literally it rained. It was like, I want to say, it was like 85 degrees and then it turned down to 75 and then it started pouring down raining. It was very interesting yesterday. The sky was even blue. It was like, you could tell like how the rain is going to start, but it's okay. I got to drink more water, y'all. My doctor told me I got to drink more water. So that's what I've been doing, like, drinking a whole lot of water. But other than that, what is going on with everybody tonight? I'm waiting on some people to come on through because hopefully I can be able to talk to them. And they DM me already. I'm just waiting on them. <laughs> but tell me how y'all day was. It's enough about me. Enough about me. Tell me how y'all day was. I want to hear it. I'm going to hear some good stories. I don't want to hear no bad stories. I get bad stories every day from Chicago. But tell me, what, do what is y'all plan for the summer? Are y'all going to Vegas? I mean, since we all open back up, what is everybody's plan? I would love to hear. I want to hear. I'm like a big old baby. I want to hear. Uh-oh. Yes, the reason why I'm squinting is because my eye is been oh, crap. My eyes have been a little bit irritated. And I'm trying not to rub it, so I feel like something bit me on my arm. It probably did when some mosquitoes had bit me on my arm. But yes, but other than that, like I said, my day has been going great. Oh, this one I wanted to talk about. Here lately, I've been hearing broken bad relationships. Um, you gonna take me with you because I I need to get into the gym too. You know. <laughs> um, I'm 
I don't know. Is it me or is just everybody else been talking about bad breakups and men that cheating and the women are cheating? I mean, is it just only me or I'm not or I'm not the only one that is hearing that? Because I want to hear some of y'all comments about that. Like men be cheating, women be cheating. I've been hearing about that here lately. Like to me, it's most of the men that are cheaters. You know, we just go behind for what the men are doing. You know, people got mad at me. I think it was last night when I was on somebody's live. And I was speaking about the two facts of the reality and what's not reality because of the, these guys want to go out here and look at Big Booty Judy and uh, Barbie Girl, you know. You know, Barbie girls looking for their cans, and cans have already been taken. So, I mean, to me, to be honest, there shouldn't be no man be asking about a woman's cheating because everybody cheats. All the bad ones are cheaters. All the good ones are not. Always remember that. All the bad ones are cheaters. All the good ones are not. I think my cat scratched my arm. That's why my arm is itching. What's up? You want to get this clout today? Speak to the world. Speak to the You're not going to speak to the world? You're not going to say hi? You're not going to speak? Hmm. No. You just want to look, huh? You want to see what I'm looking at, huh? I'm looking at my TV. Hey, Minnesota girl. How are you? My dog, you see him? He, he's trying to see what I'm looking at and see who I'm talking with. He's so nosy like that. You see how his ears reaching up because he know I'm talking about him. What's up? How you doing? You know? You just want to just see, huh? Yeah. It is. And you know why? Because us people don't realize it that when you have true love in your life and actually true love and that or that special someone that is in your life, you don't need to be cheating on that person. I swear, you, I, I'm, I'm kidding you not. Oh. By the way, guys, tomorrow, if you all could tune in early in the morning, around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, sit down, sit, around 9 to 10 o'clock, it's my daughter's graduation, she's graduating out of 8th grade. Hey, Brooke, so she's graduating out of the 8th grade tomorrow. Um. I will be posting it on live. I may have to turn off the comments because I don't want to interfere in her graduation, even though it probably won't when that time I get done. But I may leave the graduate, you know, I may leave the comments on. Depends on how bad it is. And hopefully nobody don't call me on my daughter's graduation. But tomorrow I'm maybe in and out of the Michael Carrier um, morning show. So, because I have to take her to school at 8.30. Hi, King and Firma. So, once I get done with her, if you ever want to come in, King, I'm here for you. I am right here, King. So, if you, um, so tomorrow, I may be on there for maybe a little bit short because I have to take my daughter to school tomorrow. So she can be there. I know. And that's the bad thing about it because she ain't going to be able to see all the colors because she's going to be walking across the stage and, and everything. And um, so hopefully um, I could be on this because this. Hi, Finally, you? you picked me up to your interview. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting on my interview to come now. 
but I'm just I'm giving everybody some time to talk with me before he gets here because he's supposed to be here at eight o'clock. Uh, and it's just a quarter room, so I'm just giving him some timing. Um, tomorrow, I won't be, be able to go to the Michael Kyle morning show like I normally be because it's my daughter's graduation tomorrow. She's graduating out of eighth grade. So what I'm going to do is I will be on the Michael Kyle for maybe about 15 minutes, and then I'm going straight to my live because I will be taping her graduation so I'm not gonna be able to put nobody on or add anybody oh, okay. on tomorrow. Yeah. And that's only like tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow evening I had do have a comedy coming on to my podcast by the name of Antoine. By that my my uh, Yeah. I was whoever done I was it. about to say um congratulations on your daughter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How old she is now? 18, right? No, my daughter is 14. She's going to grammar school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's love to see your face. It's love to see your face. Yes, love. Yes, same here. Love you. And I'm glad. That, love you, too. Hope, and I'm glad that you Hope you come. have a lovely day. Oh, yes, I will. Bye-bye. Yes, I will. I'm ready. Bye-bye. So, thank you. So, tomorrow. Hey, Levant Rogers, what is going down with your head, Bernie? Hey, big bro, how are you? I'm so glad you are able to come. Okay, I'm inviting you. So I don't know if you're going to come and show up. But yes. I, I just asked. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How's everything? Congratulations on your new album. I'm good, yeah. Hey, Dre Day. I'm going to bring two people on. How's everything? Hi, Herschel. Well, hello there. Hi, guys. Dre, this is... Hey, how's it going? Um, yes. So, what I'm going to do is tomorrow, I'm doing my daughter's broadcasting live for her great eighth grade graduation and everything. So, tomorrow, oh, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm trying not to cry on there. You know, but anyway, but how are you doing today, sir? I'm very well, thank you. That's good. And now, how, when is your album coming out? My album? Yes. Uh, I heard you got an album coming out soon. Oh, yeah, it's coming out. Uh, it's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. All right, and then is it going to be on iTunes or is it going to be on... Um, is it iTunes or how can we find your music? Um, yeah, it's on iTunes. All you gotta do is like uh, search it up. Okay, cool. I will be looking forward to hear you. I, you know, I heard the demo when you was on your live, and I'm like, awesome! I'm loving it. I can't wait to hear the full album mm -hmm. and everything. So I wanted to say congratulations, young man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep striving. Keep going. And don't let nobody take your, your joy away from you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you keep doing what you need to do. So what town? Tell everybody what part of town you in. I'm in a uh, town. Yeah, hold on. I'm in a town like called um like Duckinville. It's like where I live. Mm hmm Is that in like in uh, Texas or where? Yes, yeah, in Texas. That's where I live. Now, what can you tell? Um, I don't have my, my paperwork, so you got to excuse me because I did say I want you on my podcast. So ask me this. When you had did your album, what year did you start your first, very first album? I started in 2003. Yeah, 2003. 2003. 
So you were like 19, 17? I was like, yeah, I was 17 when I first started. And, I, and I'm, like I said, I am so proud of you because you still keeping going. You still keeping moving. Are you working with any artists right now with your, um, uh oh, sorry. Are you doing any featurings or is someone any featurings on your album? Mm, yeah, I'm working like with like an artist called um oh Drake. Yeah, I'm working with Drake. Really? How, what is that like working with Mr. Drake? Oh, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Now he's on your new album, or I know he's featuring in your other album. So is he in your new album as well? Yeah. Wow. I wanted to say it is a pleasure to meet you. And what can you tell the young, there's like these new younger artists that wants to do their own music, what can you tell them and how can you demonstrate them to their music and what is your best advice for them? All you got to do, guys, is follow your dream or like follow your uh, bliss, whatever that means. I don't know what bliss means, but... <laughs> Bliss means you got to follow your dream and follow your guidelines. Yeah. That's what it means. You got to follow your guidelines. If you don't follow your guidelines, you will fall. So always remember, follow your guidelines. Listen to God's ear because God's always going to be in your ear all the time. Stay prayed up. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil take your joy away because he can you know, pay attention to your surroundings. I'm giving you an advice of what someone told me when you're in this industry. Always pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the people you are around. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, you don't want nobody in your circle that is bad energy. Because once they have that bad energy, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want that to reflect on you. Let them do their bad energy to somewhere else and not to you because you're so young. How old are you now? About 25, 26? Yeah. So, still young. You know, you're still young, still handsome, you know. Mm -hmm. As a mom, I'm a mother and my son, he's 23 and I tell him all the time, know who your people are. At all times, you know, especially be careful in your surroundings of your circle. Mm -hmm. Now, all everybody gonna be your friend, yeah. but you are gonna have somebody gonna either be jealous of you, support you, or talk about you. So, what you want to do is have people in your right circle that is gonna support you, and not the ones that are gonna talk about you, or the special ones with the hating. Because there's so much hating going on, especially in the music area. Keep your mind frame together, sir. Mm -hmm. Keep your mind frame together. Because as one thing I do know, people are out here to be hate. And I don't want nobody to hate on you because you're a less young man. Respectable young man. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm loving your music. My daughter, she even told me, she said, Mom, you got him. I said, yes. Yeah. So, Coach Patty, I'll be with you in a second. I'm just giving you that advice. You know, as a mother of the industry, I'm giving you that advice. Like, you know, be aware. Keep working with Drake. You're in good hands with Drake. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to argue with Drake and Kanye, are you all coming together as um, as a group, or I mean, not as a group, but as in your features as well, or you just have just Drake on you? I just have Drake. That's good. That is what's up. Keep going, keep striving, and positive mind, positive energy. Yeah. You know, always take that. If, I, if you don't get any other advice from me, positive mind, positive energy. Because you can go a long, a long way from that. Yeah. It takes you a whole, whole lot longer, you know, mm -hmm. farther than we, you at right now. It's going to take you like this bench. Now, are you going to do any movies right now? Are you planning on doing any movies? Uh, I don't think so. Not yet. 
I will though soon. And what about the um are you doing any features with like soundtrack movies or anything? Because mm. I know Drake got a plenty of pull for you. Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, do you have any questions for me? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, you have a good evening, sir. Okay. And thank you for coming in. Always come in, drop in if you want to. You know, you always welcome on my podcast. Always. Okay. All righty then. Look to you. Okay. All righty then. Bye bye. Press the X button. Hey, Coach Patty, how are you? I'm, I'm about to bring you on, Coach. Uh oh, did you leave? I'm trying to join you, Coach. I'm trying to let me see if I can type your name. There we go. Okay, now this young man is coming all the way from Louisiana. Hello, Coach the Looking. How uh, are you? Night, night, gentlemen. Oh. oh. Life has been so beautiful yesterday. I wish you was out here yesterday because me and you probably would have gotten a whole lot of things done. Oh, man, you got to, uh, I'm going to take me a trip to Chicago, man. She was on. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Man, yesterday I went to go, um, I support a friend of mine. And when I supported him, when I supported him, when I supported him, People ask me, they was like, what is you do, you know, um, what is it that you do? And I told them, you know, gave them a little short bio of mine, mm -hmm. not knowing that they were going to come to me and ask me about my podcast. Few people knew who I was. A few people knew who I was. Bobby. You know, how you trying to do something on a sled and you're like, okay, you know, maybe they ain't going to recognize yeah. me. I said, I can't get rid of it. <laughs> I cannot do no identity uh, uh, looking like, you know. Oh, yeah. But it was all good and gravy. How was your weekend? Happy uh, belated Father's Day to you. It was, um, it was wonderful. Had a I know you had an exciting weekend. I know you did. Um, like I said, I wanted to go over some reviews with you. I, you know, we went over to I don't have all my notes with me. I'm so trying to get everything cut up. I just came from the doctor's office. I'm okay. Lord forbid me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you in a rush like this, it's like you want to get everything together. But this is what I wanted to ask you last Friday. How long did it took you to gather those children up to do what you do? How long did it take? You want to be honest with you? I'm gonna love to hear it. I got to hear well, it. Pray yourself now. It took me two days. <laughs> Shut the front door. Really? To get all <laughs> those children. By the end of the week, by the, some of the, like, mind you, some of the kids, I coach already at a high school. And some kids, right. they run track for a different. Uh, high schools, but one of the kids, like I tell you, I've been mentoring him since he was four years old. And another kid that ran track with him, like, hey man, what that is you be wearing? What shirt you be wearing? And he was like, oh, this men are excellent, man. We was trying to, He's like, yeah, man, you order that. <laughs> one thing led to another. Talked to his daddy, talked to his mama. We sat down, boom, got that kid. Next thing you know, they go to the track meet. Another kid saw them, hey man, what that is y'all got on? Led to another, talked to the grandparents. Talk to the mama, sit down. It, now, you went to these parents' houses and grandparents' houses to talk with them, or you had them all meeting outside, or had a, like a big open facility for them? Or, I mean, how is that going? Now, I met when I was talking to the kid, I met the mom and the dad. I was out there supporting another kid at a track meet, and they just walked on, uh -huh. like, I know this ain't the right time. Well, we love what you're doing. And he pulled me to the side like, hey, man, we love what you're doing. Please, can you mentor our son? 
we we see all the good kids you have. We didn't know some of the kids. I'm like, sure, you know, just gave my number and you know we contact after that. And it's just right. It's just been success uh, ever since I've been doing it. Like it's been a blessing. Like from I don't know. I mean. Like I was telling you, the the, the car accident, the the the, the, uh, the asthma in the hospital with COVID, and it's like I'm like, damn, man, this man here, he didn't take me to heaven yet. So what else you need? To do? <laughs> so let me tell you something. God ain't finished with you yet, cause your work is still need to be done on this earth. I mean, I tell anybody that you know when they said, I wonder, uh, you know, the question God. We're not supposed to question God, but I'm always going to say this here. When God take you through something, that means God is still working on what you have. God has still got plans for you. God also had the mind frame of say, you know what? I'm going to let you see still for a moment. I'm going to let you see the light because what I have for you in storage is nothing that you have planned for. Always remember. Amen. Always remember that. Because, uh, like I said, life, you mean you, we talked about, we talked half of what I told you. Because we didn't get a chance to talk as much as like we should. Right. But what I've been through, it could have been many a day, a many a night that I had to say thank you, Lord, for letting me be here and be on this earth because. I could have had lost my life and back here in 2013. I was 34 years old. Fighting. Fighting for my right. life. I didn't know what was going on. My body swelled up so bad. And they had the doctor told my mother if she waited within less than 24 hours, I would have been dead. Wow. That's a blessing. Yes. And they didn't, my mom went to two, she took me to two different hospitals. I went to Mercy and I went to Chicago University. Chicago and Mercy was, Mercy gave me some water pills. Chicago University made me stay there for almost 12 hours and never been seen. Wow, that's crazy. Never been seen. So I tell a lot of people, I'm not going to the Chicago University, and I'm damn sure they ain't going to Mercy. <laughs> I'm going to take my butt to the county hospital because that's who saved my life. You know, Cook County Hospital was like, uh, no, this is going on with you. Um, we're going to have to give you eight ounces of blood, eight pints of blood. First blood they had was from Chicago University. They had the wrong type of blood that I had. So they had to call around. My mother was a, when they said my mother was a prayer mother, I told my mother, I said, well, give me your blood then. <laughs> she said, I can't even give you my blood. I said, how will you know? You know, and they was like, no, nah, it doesn't work that way. We have to give you eight pounds of blood. Your mom is not going to be able to give us all the blood because you and your mom blood is not the same type. Right. So happy my mom doctor was the one who doctorized me that night. And she said, no, you and your mom had two different types of blood. And I said, well, how are you? And she said, because I'm your mom's doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, make a long story short, God has a plan for me. And maybe this is his plan right now. And maybe he's still working with me. You know what I'm saying? But me to tell you this, God has a plan, and He ain't done. He's not done. He ain't done till He say He's done. You know. But my theory is, I'm glad that you're still doing with these children. Keep up the good work. I mean, I'd be glad when you do come to Chicago. Yeah. We gonna get out. I'm trying to get everybody out yeah, here. Come. I'm trying to get everybody out here. You know, I just um, I called. Michael Kyer last night to see if he can come on to my podcast. Of course, I'm going to mention you. Of course, I am. To see what can we do to team up. I haven't talked to my daughter's coach, but I will do it tomorrow. 
because we all taking my daughter to dinner after, I mean, lunch after graduation. So I will be talking with him. That's only if he comes. If he doesn't come, then I understand. Right. I took out the phone with my call me, uh, you know, he always call me cracking jokes. Tell about some, uh, uh, <laughs> Cause I think I'm saying, well, the first time you met me, he thought I was going to rob somebody or something. I don't know why he thought that. But uh, when I got the phone with just now, he was like, why are you calling me? You ain't in jail robbing somebody. You rob somebody. Huh? I'm like, no, man. Oh, this, how you doing? <laughs> oh, all right. What's up, nephew? I'm like, man, this man, you're crazy. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. Yeah. Uncle Mike is very special. He's a very special young man. You know, so much talent. So much talent. You know, he taught me how to even become a, a outspoken person. You know, I used to be closed in you know, but now I'm open up to talk. Whatever is on my mind, he was like, oh, just open it up. Just talk. Talk. I'm like, okay. So now I'm talking, you know, you know, his comedy class helped me so much. So shout out to Michael Tyre. Oh. But let's get <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's get down to the nitty gritty though. Now you said it takes two days for you to get those children. And how many children did you have within those two days? Fifteen. And then within that week, how many you had before? I mean, afterwards. 20 or 22, 25. Something. And now how many Now how many children do you have now all together? 30, 38. 38? Oh, you almost got yourself a class. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I got wow. a dream team. Well, now, are you planning on doing a movie documentary with yes, this? Yes, I am. Uh, I have to go meet uh the mayor of New Orleans. I go meet her uh Saturday. I mean uh Wednesday for ten o'clock, and we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna hook up with some directors. They're gonna do a documentary of me of my life, everything I've been through in New Orleans, how I become uh to this point where I decide to I will mentor kids. Uh, and also they're gonna do a book on me, so I'm gonna have a book. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a book. I know it's crazy. I still be crying and be like, what? I'm going to have a what? Like, I'm going to have a book about myself? Like, I'll be like, whoa. So, uh, 35 kids. Yeah, many kids. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to do uh, a book, and I'm going to do a document. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through different scenes in New Orleans, different, like, the French quarters, where I was born and raised uh, in the night wall, uh, where my where I met a lot of my friends at stuff like that, and we just gonna go around the city and they gonna record me while I'm talking, and we gonna have a little documentary. Well, I think I think he said an hour and a half, I think, a ninety minutes. It was something like that. So, so. So are they? It's like a documentary, or is it actually movie? Because you know some documentaries are documentaries, and then you got some that are movies. I told them documentary. I ain't ready for the movie scene yet. Like, I got a. Why not? I gotta practice first. I need a, I need a I need a coach. I can't go out there. You know what I'm saying? I got I need a coach. I need a I need an acting coach. Well, you know, you can also have somebody. I want to do a documentary on your story as so also. There we go. That's MoJ 2000. Salute, see? see? There we go. Hey, all that you gotta do, DM me right now. Whatever you, whatever, DM me right now, and we're going to talk at I Get Off podcast with my sister, Bonnie, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Just, I got I got to stay on my podcast with my queen, with my sis first. I can't get off. So just DM me. DM, <laughs> DM me. Yeah. Uh, we go, man, I come to you. I come, I get to catch a plane. It's whatever. Anything to get these kids an outreach and an outskirts of life and, 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 and to tell them. They could do anything they want to be and, and, and to keep their they, they levels up high and not down here, man, it's whatever. So if you want to do it, we can sit down, we can talk, whatever, uh, get my team together, we can sit down, chop it up we, over over some dinner, food, whatever, and we can talk about it. Yeah. And I will be gladly to help out yeah. if 
you know, I'm anyway, a, should I would be glad. real on it on the documentary. I'm telling you, though, everything I'm not going to shoot coat nothing, everything gonna be real. It is me, that's why I always talk to my kids, and they be like, Coach, why? Are you yes, Mojay. that's my big brother, too. So, Mojay, you know, he will make sure he gets it done, gets it yeah. in. You know, I really want you to get linked up with Moj because Moj has a lot of pull in, in this documentary as well. You know? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. But that's why I tell my kids, my yes. kids be like, Coach, why are you always so aggressive? I'm like, I like that's just me. Like a lot of people in in, in, in anything, in anything they've been in the NFL, they made it and to be successful movie star, whatever, they um it mm -hmm. haven't changed. They always been them. See, when you change, then you know people look at you like, "Oh no, we want the same person." So I stayed. But we had before, yeah, right? I can't, I can't. No problem, big bro. You know I got you. You know I got you. I love you, big bro. But yes, and that's what I always say. You know, we never know who we may come across. You know, and. Once we get across that person, we should not change for nobody. Right. A lot of people was like, oh, I didn't know you do that kind of person. I thought you was going to be changing up for me. Mm-mm. What do I need to change for? Right. Because I ain't changing for nobody. Everybody, they told me that. I'm still suffering. I'm still suffering. I'm still suffering. Yeah. Suffering is suffering. Right. You know You're what I'm like, saying? You know I don't care how much money a millionaire has. Right. I feel like that millionaire should not change who they were before. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody should not change for who they are. And that's one thing I had to learn. Like, you don't change. I don't care what, how many people they want you to, you know. It's not even about my numbers. It's not even about the mind front. It's about who I talk to every single day. Maybe I can lift them up and they can lift me up. Amen. I agree. You know, so I, I'm always going to be hilarious. Some people think I'm hilarious. Some people are like, what the heck is she talking <laughs> about? You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Some people are like, huh? That's not at the topic. But then once I get done and say what I needed to say, then I'm like, oh, that's what she meant. She meant around the bushes just to go ahead and say what she needs to right. say. Yeah, sometimes I do that, but in the meantime, I'm not changing. I don't think I'm better than nobody. I'm not, you know, I always say this. I am no. I don't think that I'm no better than Jesus because that's the only man that is better than all of us right, right. now. He's in a higher state. He can help us. He can guide us and lead us. But other people cannot lead. We could only go by the leadership and the talk that they give us right. and follow through. We're not followers. We are the leaders. But it's only a higher power of leader that is God. Yeah. And I don't think, I think I'm lower than you know, than the average person. The reason why I've been is because I'm just not getting my credit together. I'm not going to change. Mm -mm. I'm still going to be me. I'm going to still act like a little five-year-old kid jumping on bumper bees and, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get in the uh, in the bean bag with my kid grandbabies, you know what I'm saying? They making me <laughs> have, I don't even want to go bungee jumping. <laughs> You know, that's something I didn't did on when I was 18 years old and I'm ready to do it again. You know, I'm just like a kid. You know, I'm going to do more. Thank you. Thank you. I will, big bro. I will. And like I said, I just want to act like a kid. The reason why being because there's so much that these kids today don't know how to do at the end of the day. Right. These kids, these kids, nah, these they, they need guidance. They need a lot of guidance. See, and that's when I come into play. And like I said, I've been doing this for nine years. So getting a kid and I listen, I really, I listen to the parents when they tell me, oh, my child going to do this. 
Oh, he didn't smoke weed. He didn't did this. He didn't did that. I listen. I ain't gonna lie. I listen for like a little while, but after the week, I'm like, man, give me your child. By the time you come back next week, that next month, give you a better, a person. different story with me. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not I'm not saying I'm gonna be hoorah and aggressive with him. I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna give him the real and, and, and preach to him and talk to him. You know, you don't gotta do this. You know what I'm saying? I got, I can find you a job. I can find you something to do. You, that's what you really want to do, but uh, I got I, I got a kid now. His mama uh, called me. Man, I really want to thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. You was a blessing from God, and I'd be like, you know, you don't gotta thank me. I just I appreciate you for letting me reach out. To I mean, yeah, because right. at the end of the day, I just was doing my job. You know what I'm saying? Like I I just don't wake up. And be like, hey, let me go be a mentor. No, I've been doing it for so long, I just never pushed it. But now since I pushed it, now I'm taking it serious because I see that a lot of kids need my help. So if I, mm -hmm. if I could get back to the community and get these kids the help that I really didn't have uh, coming up, so why mm -hmm. not? Why not reach the kid and give him some help if he really need it? I'm not going to never tell a kid, oh, man, I can't help you. You are no. You gonna make my name. You gonna make my name look bad. No, I'm not, I would never do that. I would say, "Hey, man, let me let me talk to you for a minute." I do this all day. Hey, man, right. where, where you see yourself in five years? A lot of kids tell me, "Dead, jail." I be like, "Nah, bro, that's that's not the wave." You don't you don't see yourself being no engineer, no carpenter, going to college, getting a degree. You don't see yourself. Right. In the streets, I'm a hustler. Well, you don't gotta be a hustler, but then see what I you, you like, it, right? You know that only leads to two things, right? Like, what well, that is, but like, is it your mama gonna gonna call a second line? Well, we got a second line band out here when they have a funeral, they do second line bands. I said, your mama gonna have a second line yeah. band and put your face on the t shirt, or she gonna be coming see you with a jumpsuit on? Is it a two player that's gonna happen? Man, why, why, why people always say that because it's the truth, like, it's the guy. Truth. Like y'all ain't the only person that been around and seen stuff and seen this, did that, seen that. I was once 14, 15, 16 years old, so I know the outskirts of that. I didn't see it with my own two eyes. And now I'm 35. I could now it's time to get back to these little young boys and let them know. And let me take you on a ride with me, with men of excellence. Let me show you some stuff. Let's go travel somewhere. Let's go to the beach or something. Let's go ahead of bowling. Anything, anything y'all want to do to just keep them together and keep them occupied. So, love yeah. what I And that's the only thing about the truth is a lot of parents, and you know, you got some parents that are afraid of the truth because they are understanding, realizing that, you know, once you have that man say, a friend, oh, five years I may be there, or five years I'm not going to school. You got some that do want to go to HBCU. You got some that do want to go to an all-state university. But in the meantime, we have to encourage our children every single day, even as me as a parent. Mm -hmm. I know I have to tell my daughter, what do you see yourself in five years? Oh, I'm planning on going to school. I want to go to college. I'm going to Spelman. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I, I see where your head is at. When I ask my middle son, hey, what do you see yourself in middle school? Oh, mom, I'm planning on going to the NFL. I'm already in college. I'm planning on doing what I need to do for four years, and then I'm going my way to, to the NFL. I'm going straight to the NFL. I want to go pro. Right. Okay. Now, when I ask my oldest son, that was a questionable, and I had to tell him, look, it's time for you to get your life right. You 23 years old. Yeah. You're a father of two. What are you going to do? Right. You can't and depend on me all the time because I'm not going to be here too long. My time is almost outdated. Mama, stop saying that. I said, it's the honest truth. It's the honest truth. Sit down and sit. I'm talking to my dog. I'm sorry. Oh, I got mine. That's cold. <laughs> yeah. Sit. He trying to get his clout, and he ain't getting it tonight. He already got five minutes. I, I, my... but... <laughs> I, I got a rod wallet, so he ain't cage. He can get on my nerves. 
Yes, but um, I already know what he wants. He want to go lay down, but I'm not going to let him lay down in my bed. Not right now. <laughs> but um, my oldest son, I have to guide him every single day. Look, when you going to get this done? When you going to get that done? When you going to go? You know, you signed up for the Army. When you going to go? But mama, I'm going to go real soon, you know. It, I just want to make sure what I want to do. I'm like, look, you got two kids. Your mind frame is already set. Right. You know, your mind frame is already set. So you shouldn't even have that kind of problem. And you shouldn't even be thinking about that kind of issue. Because it should be already set of what you need to do in life. Right. You know. He didn't he didn't realize what I was saying. Wait before you have sex. Those three words. He annoyed. He was like, no, nah, mama, I really like no wait before you have sex. Cause sex is not the word right now. You gotta get your education. You gotta get your college degree. You gotta get this done. Wait. But he didn't want to wait. And now he's like, he, one thing I can say is, thank God there's a God that he's still living. I jumped him, literally jumped this boy out of the game. Literally jumped him out of the game. And they, you know, I told the guys, I don't know who you all are. When y'all see this one here, look the other way. He ain't going to be a part or initiated to nothing. He's going to join my game. Mm -hmm. One man was like, bro, you can't hang around us. Your mom know too many people. Your mom know too many police officers. Your mom, I know who your mother is. And that's how they kept saying it. Uh-uh, your mama linked up with this person, your mama linked up with that person. Uh-uh. Ain't no way. You can't be hanging around wow. us. You ain't getting us locked up. You ain't getting us killed. <laughs> you know? Your mama know too many people, and this is what I told him. You know? And he looked at me, he said, Mom, uh, did you know? I said, no. Nah. I don't know nothing. But I know one thing, your bug went back to school. And sure enough, he went back to school. And I had to force him to go back to school. Because, like I told him, two things can happen. Jail time or death. And right now, I don't have time to bury none of you all. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to go into nobody's cameras and trying to make out that kind of arrangements. No, I'm not ready for that. And they look, you know, my children looked at me like, oh, no, mama crazy. Mama, mm -mm, don't mess with mama today. Because of the simple fact, when I'm, when I'm about to say it to this, guys, sometimes as a parent, you have to put that in a force, especially if their father is not around or there's no male finger around them. You have to put a male force on your children. Right. As a single black mom, and I think I did a great indeed to have three graduates out of high school. Well, actually, three graduates out of eighth grade, two graduates out of high school. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Like, I, I know it's kind of hard, but I know you had like a, a single mom came to you to say, look, can you help me out with my son or can you help me out with my daughter? I know you had some kind of idea that somebody can reach out to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it. I had that just uh, at my last Feed the Homeless in the Community event. I had that happen to me. A lady walked up on me and like, excuse me, what is this? And what, what do you do? And I told her, and she's like, for real? Well, I have a 10 year old grandson, he just don't listen. And another little, like, I have a 13 year old son, he don't listen. I say, Look, send him to me. By the end of the week, he don't listen. And I, now I have a kid out there, he was doing some bad stuff. Uh, and I said, You see that kid over there? 
I said, look, you go to that kid, right? Right? And ask him how I changed his life and why I should tell you. I said, his mama would have never thought he would have been out here with a button-down button on with some slacks. I got him out here like that, though. It's just, and, and, and I just don't, when we do events, everybody be like, man, they, they look together. You're supposed to look like that. You're supposed to look, when you go out in the community, you're supposed to look like to, part of, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to look together. You're supposed to have all the same. Right. Everybody know who you is. That's how people gonna know who you are. You don't wanna go out there with no raggedy jeans on and a, and a long t-shirt with some, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You gotta go out, you gotta be casual sometimes. And I just be chilling, switch it up a little, switch it up a little. You don't have on, have on. You don't gotta have on some pops right. or some Adidas pants. Put your button down, shoes and a little belt. Put your shirt in your pants and come out here. And that's what I did for my last home. Oh, I had how many kids? I had twelve or ten kids was out there at the last event. All of them had these shirts. I don't know if you can see. Hold up, but I'm gonna give you one so I can send it to you. That's the man, excellent. Yeah. And they had the name on it. And all uh -huh. of them, I wore the red one, they wore the white one. And they had a shirt and their pants, dress shoes. I got the pictures all on the page and everything. And it, it was a nice event. The news came out there. It was nice. So I'm just, that is it's awesome. live. That's it. I ain't trying to get no, you know, publicity for this, no none of that. I'm just trying to change the life. That's it. I feel like if I could reach one, I could teach them all. You know what that sandwich says, right? Each, teach one. Each one. Yeah. Each one you teach one. And this is my other one I always say, too. Every action is a reaction. Yeah. Every action is a reaction because what these children don't realize is they see what the outsiders are doing. They looking at how do you feel about these music nowadays? Do you think it's affecting our children today? And then, then when we was coming up, uh, or do it have anything with the music today? Uh, I'm, what you gotta understand? Like, all right, uh, these kids what fourteen, fifteen, well, young mm -hmm. boy. Uh, Fred O'Bain, Pooh Shies, they all them, the dirt. But at the same time, you gotta put yourself, you gotta put yourself in these shoes. Because when we was their age, we would listen to the High Boys, Lil Wayne, Juvenile Turk, Cash, uh, No Limit. Uh, who else was listening to? Tupac, Biggie, 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 NWA, Biggie, NWA, Luke. And you know, they had some stuff, they had some heat. Uh, e e yeah. So I don't know why we e really. we can name and it goes this on and on and on. Nah, Jay Z, the old, the younger. So it go all and on. But you, that's why I tell a lot of people you can't really fault them kids for the music they listening to them because that's the age bracket. When we had music that was our age bracket. So I mean, it, I don't. But like if I if I, when they get in the van with me, I take them someplace. We play their music. But they don't mm. don't put the cursing version on. But they play the music, like right. You do the clean yeah. version. The you, put, you don't right. put the explicit on that. You put the clean version so on. Out now. of respect, they'll put on the clean version. But why put it on? Because it's just out of respect. But they listen. All right. That's that's their music. That's what they listen to. They listen to you know Young Boy, Dirt, like I said, or you know Pooh Shies. You can name who else? Uh, Jada Youngin. Uh, I know a couple of them now. I'm 35. Might be 35, but I know a couple of them now. <laughs> and I'm in my early 40s, yeah. so you know, I know the game. So, yeah, yeah. and all the game, the other kid that was from Chicago, King Vaughn, you know, and I love, I, 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 I jam a little music a little bit because I, be, I don't like <laughs> to be stuck up around my kids when I'm mentoring them. I don't want them to. Right, right. Oh, man, he, Sometimes you got to let them be free. Let them be free. You got to. Gotta let them be free. I'm saying, my jam with them. Like, come on, yeah, like that. Yeah, what up? <laughs> they be like, coach, this such and such. We a jam. That, I think that's why my kids love me so much because who the per the person that I am, and when I'm around them, they love to be around them. Like some kids, some of my kids, when they come to when they come to my house, I have a game night for them. They don't want to leave. They be like, coach, we we'll sleep on them. Wow. 
I'm like, y'all ain't gonna sleep on the floor, bro. I get y'all no clue. We don't need no air mattress. We'll sleep on the floor. Give us a game. <laughs> Give us the game, the PlayStation, some food, and some water. I'm good. Then they don't be caring. They, they'll be there all night. They'll play. They'll play Madden tournaments, NBA, 2K tournaments. They just, it's just a vibe. Like, it's just a vibe. And the, Yes. Yeah. And the, that's what most kids need is like, hey, let's go play the game. Like, we have a game room called ESPN. And then we got another one called David Busters. So, when I do is like my daughter, she said I want to go to David Buster's. I'm not even sure David's Buster is open, but like I told her, I can go find a place anywhere and I can go shut it down. No, nah, Mama, don't shut it down. I don't want to. I don't want you to shut nothing down because she know I'm good for that. No, nah, Mama, don't shut nothing down because if I'm going to a place, I'll shut the whole system down. Like, hey, look, we're gonna have a pack house. You're gonna have to shut it down. You know, we're gonna shut this place down. They were like, hey, come on, bring it in, because that's where the money is at right now. So right. me, I can go anywhere now. And I didn't know I you know, when like I said, yesterday was a prime example. They was like, Oh, you know, uh, I know you. I'm like, <laughs> you know, my name. And I was like, no, nah, I know you. I was like, wow. Because I didn't know who followed me. I never right. knew. And this is what I always said. I never know who may follow me because once they start following me on Instagram and they see me keep going, they see me saying, you know, doing this for this person and doing this for that person and sponsoring that person and supporting that person. It's like okay, hmm. who, who that person? And never know. Right. I never know. <laughs> and so now one guy told me he said you can come over here anytime you want to, and we'll shut the place down mm -hmm. for you. What? <laughs> you right. know, I never had that done before because I can go into any place, and this is my own city. I was like, oh yeah, you wanna have your daughter's uh, graduation party. You like, what are you doing for your daughter's graduation party? I'm like, I don't know if she's going to even have a graduation party. You know, I don't know what may happen. He said, bring her over to my place. We got you. We'll shut the place down for you. I know what I come at when I want to party. I hope you shut it out with me. I'm coming to <laughs> shut it Because I ain't never been sick. Exactly. And I was like, wow. I and mean, this is a black owner. And shout out to Shade, because Shade is the one that told me this, guys. Like, you could come out here anytime you want to. I'm like, you black brother out of my own city and state. Shout out to Shade. And he going to come on next month. I can't wait till next month coming, guys. I'm going to have all the Chicago people on my podcast. So y'all going to be looking forward. I'm trying to get my city to come together and see what we can do and see how we're going to be able to help you to bring these children back together to where it needed to be. And I will mention your name. Mention, yep. I will mention your name and I will shout out to you, you know, next month. I have Shy Bliss. I'm trying to get Michael Kyer next month. I am trying to get all of my people to come together. I am, big bro. Look, like I said, August. Oh, let me tell you this. I want everybody to come to August. Come for my birthday. I already told the guy when my birthday is. I talked to Mr. Shade. And I already told him, look, I don't even know what I'm going to do for my birthday, but I would like to have my party here. Is it okay? Gave me his word, say yes. So next week, next Sunday, I'll be, you know, I'll be at his place next Sunday because I'm taking my mom out for Sunday brunch. So if I'm going to shut the place down, I will. August, y'all come. Come. I want everybody to come in August. Because um, I want to have comedians. Hey, Mojo, you got to get my. I had to come back up here in August for my birthday. 
because I want him to come down and, you know, do his uh, comedy. I want to do a comedy fest because I want always wanted somebody to come do the comedy. I want a singer. I wanted the whole nine yard. My birthday is August 16th. So I'm trying to do it before my birthday or should I do it after my birthday? But I want to go to Vegas after my birthday because um, this um, my sister, her name is Miss Arkansas, and she's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. So if you come in, if you can be able to be free to go to Vegas, you know, she's doing a, a real special show out there in Vegas, and it's going to be um, live taping. So, yes. I've got to. So, I'm inviting you to come out here, you know, so we can go ahead and kick it. We need to kick it hard. I got you. I'm... You know? Okay. Yes. Flight. Yes. <laughs> and, like, yes. Because I, you know, I was going to like, come to Vegas for my birthday and I'm like man I want to go to Vegas I want to go to Vegas I'm like forget I'm still going to go to Vegas but what I'm going to do with my Chicago people but now I know you know I probably had some flyers made or may have it professional made and everything so I'm also going to get some people involved too the people who did the photography I heard make up with them last night and I told them I was going to give them a call this evening because I have so much to do this morning. So I really didn't have time to go do this morning, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because you know what time it is everything, right? It is everything. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm just grateful that you and I be able to chop things up, you know, and keep striving with these babies. You know, they're going to need it. Oh, I agree. They gonna I ain't need. <laughs> uh uh, because I'm we want some of that. We need that energy over here. Right. And I'm gonna show you. And I got some more pictures for you. I'm gonna screenshot what happened over the weekend. So, you That's know, one of our kids. we go them in the excellence. He just, yeah. Hi, Royal. Royal. His name is Royal. Uh huh. Hi, Royal. Royal. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Hopefully, I meet you soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how old is Royal? Now, that's one of the babies, or that's the teenager. Royal, he's going to be a senior. He's a senior high school quarterback, matter of fact. Wow, for what high school? He's John Eric. And, and what college he's entering? I know he's the college. He's smart. I don't know what college. He, we ain't talk about it yet. We talk, but we ain't talk about it uh -huh. yet. <laughs> Make sure you go to HBCU because I heard they're doing a whole lot of um, fundraising for HBCU scholarships. So get into the scholarships, get into McDonald's scholarships, get into Mariano scholarship, get into Burger King scholarships. I'm telling you now because I was fighting for my son to get his scholarship to where he's at now. So get into all the scholarships. Make sure you keep up your grade point average. Do not take up Japanese because Japanese, I heard it was a whole lot harder compared to what my son told me. It was extra hard. So if you think about it, think twice about Japanese, even though it's a good subject and good learning, but it is super hard because my son is having such a hard time learning it. So my best bet for me to give to you, take up Espanol. Very easy, very easy to learn. I took a one and two, so keep doing it. Espanol, which is Spanish. So take up Spanish. That's my that's my thoughts to give to you, young man. So salute, congratulations. But yes. Mm -hmm. I have to tell him, you know, I'm like like I sound like a mom. I would love to talk to him, you know. So they can give them advice for what I've been through for my son. They gave my son a whole full scholarship, a whole full ride, and found out because he had he had an elf in Japanese class that he was very disappointed. Hmm. Took his grade down. Took his grade down. And they was like, oh, he's partial now. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. 
Like we didn't sign up for this. We signed up for a full scholarship. Right. And I wound up having to pay in two thousand dollars, which I didn't mind. I sure didn't mind because I was like, okay, two thousand dollars. Can you how long can we wait? And so I made a fundraiser. And we made a, a quite a bit of the fundraiser. And I still had it was like, oh, we now we owe a thousand dollars. I'm like, okay, cool. Gave him like six hundred of it. Oh, you're fine. We don't need a number. Huh? <laughs> But that's how God works. And fine. Like I thought you all said it was a thousand dollars, and I gave you six hundred of it. You told me you was fine. It was like, oh, he's fine now. So I had to sit back and say, wow. You know, I never knew college was that hard if you didn't have a scholarship. But now it's even harder if you have even a scholarship. So I was like, wow. You know, children are fighting. Or scholarships, you know. Right, yeah, it is. It's kind of tough on them kids, but uh, them kids just gotta keep fighting. College ain't hard. College ain't easy now. I remember them days. No, no not from alone. Ain't coming knock on your door and tell you to go to class. You gotta go to class. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. That is so true. But I wanted to say. I know you probably tired, had a long day. Oh. <laughs> I want to say thank you again for talking with me, you know, round two with you, with the conversation to give me the quite update for what you're doing with the young men and women. Keep up the blessing. You got my honor. You know, I'm saluting you with your documentary. Hope it's going to be a movie. Be trying to get you to do a movie. <laughs> For what you're doing, you know, the document, I'll probably see that on Netflix. Is it going to be on Netflix or is it going to be on Netflix? No, it's going to be on Netflix. I talk to Netflix. Oh, I'm in. I'm, I'm already locked in as a Netflix. I, actually, I, had a, I, had a, I, I talked to, uh, I have to go meet with them Friday. They're coming out here oh. and uh, they're going to take me out to eat. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk about uh, how, how long the documentary is going to be on Netflix, uh, how they're going to shoot it. Uh, who's gonna interview me? I really want my dude Steve Harvey to interview me. I like, I love Steve Harvey. That's my dude. I like. Steve. Well, I interview you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, anybody. I don't care. I just want to get. I I do the interview. If you want me to do the interview, hey, I'm already take look. I'm already interviewing you. So if you want me to do it, I hey, I do it. Right. You know, I still got. I would do the flyer for the uh, car wash too. Well, like I said, whenever you want me to, send, whenever you send me the pictures and, you know, see how you want me to handle it for you, I will uh, lay it out, do an outline and everything so I can be able to help you out with that. Yeah, I'm not even going to charge you. I'm not. I appreciate it. You know, <laughs> well, you, know I'll, you can post it up or if you want to, you can, you know, do however you want to do it. But I'm here. Oh man, that's like free time with me, <laughs> you know. Because when I post up my flyer, a lot of people are like, Who did your flyer? I did my own flyer, I didn't have to pay Nigeria or Kakabudas or uh, <laughs> Thailand, you know. I didn't have to pay those people to, even though they wanted me to, you know, to pay them. I'm like, Man, I could do this on my own, you know. but I don't mind doing it for you. You know, you're like my great brother. So, uh, hey, you oh, know, like my big brother. So, a long distance. Oh. Hey. Yeah, you know, from another mother. <laughs> but, it, like I said, um, if you want me to interview yeah. you, I don't mind. I'm here. Yeah. I have all those 10,000 questions for you. You know, if I have to go over my you notes, probably, probably you know. They got more people on here. They know now. I haven't told nobody about that, about the Netflix thing. I never told nobody about it yet. You probably the first, so you the first, and whoever on here, they know now. So, so everybody <laughs> gonna know about the Netflix thing. Yeah, that's a, I ain't never tell nobody yet because I wanted to keep it a secret. But now I see it ain't a secret. They got people on here. I, <laughs> well, Netflix is trying to do a documentary on your boy. 
come in New Orleans. They go try to do a documentary on me, and I'm about to get it popping. I've been writing and thinking about the scenes and the scenery, what I'm gonna do it, what I'm gonna do it at, uh, what I'm gonna see. So it's it's about to get real with men of excellence. Like I said, we just not a uh, it's just not a short term uh, program with men of excellence. Like this is long term. Like this this long term. Uh, when y'all my boys yeah. go to college and after they graduate, they have kids, house call becomes. I'm still gonna keep in contact with them. I don't care where they go, what they won't do it after that. Become lawyers, doctors. Whatever. I'm still gonna call you and be like, hey man, what's up? How you doing? Cause this is a a publicist. Yes, cause we're gonna be looking for some publicists, right. men and women. So women don't get all discriminated. Ah, like, oh. no, we have men publicists as well with the women publicists. So hey, we may need some attorneys because it's the documentary. Right. Um, we may need, we we gonna need brothers and sisters like you guys. You know, keep your hair strong. Don't let no. Let me tell you, can, you don't mind if I talk to your kids, do you? Fast like you. Listen up, guys. Listen up to me, real good. Do not, and I'm gonna say this again. Do not let anybody discourage you. Do what you want to do. Learn what you want to learn. Do what you can do, because your excellence is everything. Always remember, you don't know who may be watching you. But always take this in mind, and especially in heat. I'm telling you like I'm telling you like I'm telling my children all the time. I got three of them. Always remember, keep God first, positive mind, positive energy. Don't let nobody take your joy away. And don't let no anybody take your character away because you are the next future. You are our next future. You are our next lawyers, doctors, attorneys, publicists, whatever you want to do. And make sure it's not what you want to do. Always remember, it's God want you to do. Because God, you have to put in first. Without God, there's no you. Right. And don't think that you are beyond or above anybody because we are still mentoring as one. Right. Because God always have their place of standards and saying, look, stop, stand still, and pray. Those are my encouraging words that I needed to give. So, hey, you was guys. you talking to me or were you talking to the kid? <laughs> Wait, hold on. You, I mean, hold on. Was she talking to me? Because I took some of that, what you said just now. I felt it. I felt like it was getting to me. Ooh, that was powerful. I like that. I'm a you. See, that was God speaking to me. Through you, because through your children. No, actually, let me rephrase that. That was God speaking to right. me, to your children, through yep. you. That's crazy. But you know, I always tell my kids, though, I say, I say this, to, uh, one of the coaches said the other day at practice, and I took it, and I'd be running with it, and I've always preached. I said, you can't tell, uh, uh, Get there. How to? Mm -hmm. how, you can't tell. No, you can't tell. Been there. How to get there? Cause you're trying to get there. You can't. It ain't gonna work. Because mm -hmm. I don't know so much, and you really don't. And I've been there, so you can't tell. Been there. How to? How to get there? Cause you never got there. And they were like, "What that mean?" I like just think. About it. You mm -hmm. can't really tell me because I've been there already. I've been there already. Like I said, I've been 14, 15, 16. I've been there already. I'm just trying to get you. Peer I'm just trying to get you to stop. Peer pressure is one. Yeah. Peer pressure is one because you know what? You're going to find out what your friend. Let me tell you something too, guys. Listen to this real good. Not everybody is your friend. Mm -hmm. Can I repeat that to y'all? If I, if I need to repeat, you throw them hearts up. If I need to repeat that to you, throw your hearts up right now. If I need to repeat that to you, all 